This is Hannabrook Hills. 25 acres nestled in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia. And this... There's the barn. Everything is just swallowed by brambles. ...is where our story begins. An abandoned farm. Completely swallowed by Mother Nature. garbage is now... Ground zero. ...taller than me. ...for what would become... ...beginnings... ...of a humble homestead in the making. out and we'll just do this part. Okay. Do you want to know how I back up? I would love to. Okay. Yes, please. How did I know this was your version of backing up? I knew it. <laughs> I mean. It's a cheat code. Ta-da. There are pictures of me in the garden when I am a baby. Like little, little. My mom said that when, um, Basically, before I could talk or walk, I was in the garden. She could just put me in the grass, and I would go, and I would dig in the dirt, and I would play. There's pictures of me in what we called my first garden, and I don't even think I'm old enough to talk. I'm little, and I'm all bundled up and covered in dirt, and uh, that was the first garden I ever got to plant. So, basically, since I came out. (laughs) Since I was in existence, I wanted to play in the dirt. It's just lukewarm. Who hunts lukewarm coffee? <laughs> right? Growing up on a cattle farm, we we knew about animals. That's that's what we did. Not not it was we were ranchers, right? Do you see how there's cucumbers all along the base of these blueberry bushes? Yeah. So the goal is to make like a living mulch so that it breaks down throughout the winter, feeds and protects in the most natural way possible. Farming changed so much over the years. It became what used to be everybody had a garden and grew food for their families. It became this heavily industrialized machine when so many chemicals came into play and all of the machines got bigger and more expensive and everything went digital. All these things happened that just took farming further and further away from its natural rhythms. And we do that, we plant the comfrey around for that purpose too, right? Because it's a bioaccumulator. So it has super deep tap roots and then it reaches down and gets all sorts of goodness from the earth that other plants can't reach. And then it actually holds it in the leaves So when we chop and drop it and mulch it over the garden, it gives all that goodness back. There's so many ways that people, that people can get back to basics and that people can grow together instead of just, you know, stomping out everything in their path to try and force things to be what they think it should be. So this is what you get to do on your day off after working all week? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> More work. The work never stops when you, when you live on a farm. <laughs> a lot of people right now are wanting to learn how to do this again. Right? Things- because everything that we're doing is old. The the seed saving, the regenerative farming, the the, the way that we're wanting to grow and process and use everything is an old way of doing things, an old way of thinking. And so many people want to get back into that again. I think it's just right now is the right time for this. That's what we work towards is doing things as naturally as possible and and just learning every day how we can be better for the land 
And I think that sharing all of that is so important. So, so important. This is it. This is the old farm. gets the most magnificent leaves on like when these leaves turn it is like something out of a storybook it's so beautiful we started with a pretty small garden the first year and then every year we just kind of built it out bigger and bigger and made a couple different little greenhouses again out of like recycled material we put in big gardens over there like probably 2,000 square feet. Like garbage racking that was gonna be recycled from a business that was actually just like behind a building, gonna get <laughs> thrown away and it was like, oh, that looks handy. Burp. You know, so it was basically just again, recycled foraged material <laughs> that did most of it. Oh man, our rope swing is still in the tree. We should get that back, that's a good rope. That's a big rope. It's like a nautical rope. Wally gave it to us. It's huge. And to get it up in the tree, we took Cody's tallest ladder. We pulled up a lifted truck, then put the tallest ladder Cody had into the back of the truck and then climbed up into the tree to get the rope up in there. And then afterwards, we realized that it was a horse chestnut tree so there were certain times a year when kids couldn't use the swing because when they would swing on it, um, it would shake the horse chestnuts from the tree and they are like spiky crazy, right? Horse chestnuts look like freaking what's the guy from Ninja Turtles? Like Shredder. They're so serious and they're sharp. And kids would hop in the swing and they'd be like, oh, yay. And then they'd do it. And all of these death nuts would fall at them and start pegging them and they'd be crying and I was like, this is a danger zone. This is, mistakes were made, my friend. I, I apologize to all the chitlins who swung under that tree at that time of year. I mean, it was dreamy, but it was, it was damn near in the same state as this place. All the carpets got ripped out, the floors got redone. Put a brand new deck on it with a really nice roof on it. We did a whole bunch of renovations to inside the house. Some work got done to the bathroom, to the bedrooms. Uh, redid the living room, painted it, put all, like, just all kinds of stuff to it, right? The bay window was falling in, so that got ripped out and reinforced, and then we made this gorgeous, pallet wood feature wall and it was just like so lovely and cupboards underneath and more storage and it was quite beautiful. So, you know, just going to the neighbors for a fire and a barbecue. I mean, fuck it. Why not take the lawnmower? <laughs> when we got to the Wanick farm, we had had gardens always but we hadn't farmed together ever it just reignited this thing in, within us that we were able to connect on that we just never even anticipated meaning so much and having such a deep deep connection with again we had one garden bed that was very straight and precise. And then we had one garden that was like this journey through this wild whatever. And it was really fun. So we had like our food, food specific garden and like seed saving garden. And then we had our medicinal garden with some like fruit trees and all sorts of beautiful stuff. And it's grown so much since then. It's crazy how much it's grown since then. 
but I think that it was really special for both of us to be able to come back to our roots in that way and grow and nurture those skills that we had left behind for so long and teach each other so many things, which is just wildly wonderful. So it's it's been really special. I, I have a very special place in my heart for Wanik, for sure. She's a little lover. She's a lover. Yeah, little baby. Aaliyah, she brought it to me and said, you know, like my grandparents have this property and it's just been very forgotten and unloved. And so she asked if we wanted to check it out. And at that point, I still was working for someone else. And so I said to her, I was like, well, you know, I couldn't just leave and go do this job. Like I would have to give them, you know, like I would have to like finish the year out or do something like I couldn't just leave them in the middle of a season or anything like that. And I couldn't take on a property this big and still have a job where I was working like double full time freaking hours, you know? So it was kind of like a little bit up in the air. And then she brought us here. And we were just, like, so in love with this place. We were very much trying to decide if this was the right fit for us or not, because 25 acres is a lot. Half of me was like, okay, this is cool, blank slate. The other half was me, of me was like, this is gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> this is gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> My friend Katie had come over to chat and I was really, I was really at odds with whether or not we should come to this property because it's a huge undertaking massive amount of work. There was just so many unknown factors and we loved being in Wanick so much. And Katie said to me, she was like, we're just gonna manifest the heck out of this. Like, you know what you want. You know where you belong. Like, we are gonna manifest you just knowing what the answer is. Like, the universe is gonna tell us. And I was like, oh, Katie. <laughs> okay, faith in the universe, you know? And, uh, that evening, our landlord in Wanick called us and said that we were evicted and we had 60 days. It was for reasons that had nothing to do with us. It was his own personal reasons that he needed the place. It became either this place is happening or we're out of here, you know? Like either way, we have to go. And at that point, Cody was very much like, well, you know, we could just move back to Alberta and we could, you know, move to my dad's farm and we could like start over in, in Edson or wherever the heck it is, Wildwood, somewhere between there. That idea, it was scary for me. It was really scary for me because minus 40 with tons of snow and only a couple month long growing season. And Cody would have to inevitably work either out of town or work a long distance away, you know, so he would be gone. I would just be there real cold in the prairies all alone. Like it was, it was really a hard decision. And so we basically said, to Aaliyah, we were like, okay, I know we've been all discussing all of these different options and like if it's gonna happen, but we just got an eviction notice. We have to be out of here by like, basically it was like we had to be out just before Christmas was the deal. So, you know, we had two months to pack every single thing, dig up every single plant and get the heck out of there. And, and we needed a decision right then and there. So then we came and checked this place out, did a nice walk through and talked to her grandparents and decided like, yes, this is the plan. We're moving forward with it. There was no question anymore. We got the answer we needed and we realized 
pretty much immediately because we had never seen inside the house at that point. We had only seen the yard. So we realized very quickly at that point that uh, before we could move in, intense renovations needed to happen. At that point, we just basically dove in head first. Like there was no, there was no chill time. There was no, oh, maybe we could do this at this point. It was like, no. It was, we're clearing this stuff out. We're making a problem list. Like these are the problem areas. These are the things we need to do because we want to be in here before Christmas, you know, and, and so we started the renovation process. Everything we tried to do, we've realized that there was an even bigger problem hiding behind, you know? It was like, oh, we're gonna fix this trim. Like, we're gonna take this trim off because it looks like it's damaged. We'll fix the trim, you know, we're gonna paint these walls. And then it's like, oh, these floors are hooped. We need to redo the floors. And we're pulling up the floors and we're like, whoa. Clearly there's water damage. Okay, we need to assess this water damage. So then we rip up even more stuff. And then all of a sudden we're like, whoa, why is this floor two inches lower on this side than that side? Now we need to do this thing. So it was just like, it just turned into like a full renovation. You know, every room of the house, every floor in the house, every, the cupboards were ripped out. The old fridge was ripped out. The old everything was ripped out and all new stuff had to get put in. Well, the renovation, okay. So the question is, when were the renovations done? The renovations are not done. <laughs> there's, there's still like a couple patches of drywall mud that we have not got to sanding and haven't painted that corner. There's still things that need to happen for sure. Um, but we got in, like we started sleeping here just before Christmas, like right before Christmas. We officially like had our bed here set up and, and, um, and we were kind of like treating it like home. Dig another good sized hole right here. And then I'll back the truck up right to here. Try and avoid the hole, bucket hole. Okay. So move the hose, move the pipes, get two shovels. Oh, oh, oh Lord, oh. it's cool. Okay? Smash in the face, no big deal. No eyes? No eyes. Okay, which direction? Oh no. So I dig the hole bigger than I need it. And then I backfill floof so that these terribly abused roots that we just ripped apart have somewhere easy to take hold. Grass will tuck back on top. Okay. So if you take something fluffy, like dark. yeah, and you just put it right in there. Yeah, another scoop of that. Oh yeah. Oh. Usually, I would want to give a good hard prune to anything that I was transplanting, but because of how wet and cold it's been, I don't really want to give her a prune right now. Typically, it's better to prune them in the springtime because then it's promoting growth. Right now, the energy is receding back to the roots, which means it's not going to heal wounds as fast. In the springtime, when you cut it, it's actively sourcing energy out therefore it's healing the wounds really fast and you're less likely to have bacteria and branches die that and you usually look at it first before you finish planting it oh yeah usually i look at it and i'm like is this the right direction but it fits where it sits i think it looks nice it fits where it sits we had to dig up like I want to say thousands, like I don't even know, hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of plants and pot them and move them. And when it came time to move the plants, I basically called all of my people and I was like, look, 
I need help. All the way from the gate there, all the way back to the other gate was just a lineup of vehicles and so many friends. <laughs> like, we're running out of time. We have run out of decent weather. Like, like we got to get our plants over there. The whole thing was just like, boom, 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 cars. And we would just load up as many plants as we could take. And we were just a convoy back and forth through here, getting everything. And the, the potted plants that were out in the yard, it was just like, as far as the eye could see, just potted plants everywhere. I didn't want to leave them behind and I love my garden. <laughs> so I was like, nope, I've taken every plant with me that I can carry. So it was, it was a crazy amount of work. What was it like when I finally realized, like, this is, this is ours? It's like, I don't even know if I've still, like, I'm still in awe of it today. This land has so much to offer. Like, it has so much to give. And, and I have so much to give. <laughs> like, like, I can help you with all these things. Don't worry, Mountainside. They've got your back. Hi, honey. Hi. Hi. Did you get my text message? No. I didn't. I didn't notice. I don't like you anymore. There is no. Oh. Oh, he wanted coffee. I didn't know. What time did he want coffee? Three thirty. I didn't know. Sorry, babe. Why is this faucet dripping? Why are you should be off? It is winter. I turned you off. You should just be there should be nothing running through this. Not super fond of that. That's a tomorrow me problem. Well, I can tell you that even the driveway didn't look the way that it did when, when we got here. Only cars could make it in here. It was completely overgrown. That first floor window over there, you almost couldn't see through it. The blackberries were that high. And in some sections, they were actually coming almost touching the second story windows. This whole thing was piles of garbage, swarms of brambles. Like this building didn't even, you couldn't even see this. They were like, oh yeah, there's an old chicken coop. And it was just swallowed by brambles. It was just a mountain of blackberries. A year ago, we couldn't walk right here. And all, all up into this tree and all over there, you couldn't get at any of this stuff really. Isn't that gnarly? Right, I remember this whole thing. Yeah, you, you couldn't get beside the house. That's right there. What a change. That's wild.
yeah, there's been a lot of hard work on this place. It was like a few months of just straight bramble removal and garbage removal. It's hard to describe 13 tons of garbage. We just had to painstakingly pull back all of the damage that had been done. It was very, very challenging. I've never seen so much garbage in one place in my life. We had no idea what we were in for. the brambles it was a massive challenge me Cody and Aaliyah we kind of triple teamed this zone Fuck these guys. <laughs> you made it Hell yeah. hedge trimmers pruners shovels and we uncovered this friggin pool They had the bright idea of bringing in those lumber tarps to try and choke out the weeds and the blackberries. All it did was just choke out everything except for the blackberries. There was four or five, like eight layers of plastic and garbage, just like stacks on stacks on stacks on top of each other. The plastic and garbage was in the creek. It was all tangled up and, and swallowed by brambles. We did get a machine in to help with the massive piles of garbage and the ridiculous amounts of plastic that were out in the field. Jesus, fuck. Where's the <laughs> Driving into the mountain of plastic. <sighs> like, I don't know why. I don't know why people are litter bugs. You know, another pile of garbage. Excellent. I wonder what's hiding under there. The previous renters in here were just so disrespectful. It was never acceptable in any way, shape, or form to be a litter bug in either side of my family. Like, that just wasn't even an option. Ugh. More garbage. Bastards. There were days when I was working, like consecutive 13, 14, 15 hour days. And I just stopped noticing somehow, like how injured I was getting. Like I still have scars on my legs, like massive scars. Oh my God. Look at like, this is, this is the blackberry mess. This is actually a couple months old, this one. I don't know if it's ever gonna be the same. It really bled. That looked like, I'm a cat wrangler for a living because there's just like claw marks, like bramble claw marks all over my legs where I just was like torn to shreds. And I would get out of a day of battling brambles and I would just be <laughs> bleeding everywhere. And Cody's like, this is why I wear jeans. I'm like, it's so hot. I don't like jeans. I like shorts. I like shorts. And this whole area back here too, like, this whole pond, like we didn't even, you know, this is the pond, we didn't even know. It's so crazy. You know, we found that big, beautiful pond out there, which was completely swallowed by brambles. It was actually insane how overgrown it had become. And we were, we were just hand trimming brambles and all of a sudden we heard this huge splash and looked around and couldn't find Annabelle and we were like, what's happening? Yo, we just found a dang pond on the property and Annabelle went for a swim. And all of a sudden we just came upon this pond, this giant pond. And we'd been here for months. 
this had so much debris in it and so many brambles that had grown over into it that the pond looked half the size. So Chris had his truck here, Cody had his tractor going, and we got into our kayaks and started tying off to all of the dead, gross debris that was just like floating and stagnant in here. And Cody would throw me the rope and I'd paddle out to whatever the heck it was. And then I would tie off to it and then paddle away and he'd tie it onto the tractor or the truck or whatever. And then they just keep pulling out all of this, the dead trees and the dead branches and all of this crazy debris that was in here. And it was, it did not look like this when we arrived. We couldn't get into the front door. The blackberries were so grown up into them. All of this was scraped away to honestly, you can still kind of see some of the roots of the blackberries in there. Some of it we did by hand just so that we could get into the buildings and see what's inside of these things. Like clearly nobody had been in these things for years mm -hmm. with the way the blackberries were all grown. So, we were just curious more than what's in these buildings. Oh, yeah. Okay, toot toot. Toot toot. Hey, my knee's on fire. <laughs> That's a fun song. This is, what the fuck is this? Okay. Watch your fingies. Grab that corner. Yeah. Just let me walk around to here. Oh, there we go. We're in. <laughs> Get myself out of the way. <laughs> They don't want to wear it like a blanket? No. <laughs> That's so much. That's so much. I can't even believe that. Like how long have those, I mean, who knows if the seeds are still viable, but like, this is so many seeds. Do you know what we're going to do? Are we going to? Oh, shit. <laughs> we're going <laughs> to. Oh. What are going to do? <laughs> when we clean out the greenhouse and yeah. we sow our final winter crops, you put that on top? We're gonna put a handful of those. See how they do? Sons of biscuits in there. See how they do. Heck yeah. Oh, this is exciting. I mean, now that I think about it though, it said fava. Is a fava bean different than a fava bean? What's a fava bean? I think you're saying the same thing. Am I? Uh, Does anybody have the Google? Shoes were $4. When were shoes $4? What are you guys looking at? We we're trying to figure out when the the newsprint that's in here. Yeah, so there's a bunch of newspaper in the bottom of this trunk. So we are trying to figure out when the trunk was from. Lyndon Johnson taking the oath of office after the president of the United They're States, John F. Kennedy. Johnson. They're talking about that in here, too. Yeah, so John F. Kennedy assassination. This is an old paper. Anybody want an old trunk? Oh. I don't hey, think there's any salvaging it. Oh, sorry. Kirsty. It's falling apart. There, There's no restoring. Babe, about this leather just needs a good buff. <laughs> it's cool. Look at you. We can clean it up. It's so sad. Look at it's missing all its little buckles. It's cool, babe. It's garbage. It's not garbage. It's yeah, cool. It's Three extra large sacks of fava beans. Well, here's a good question. Then. What do you want to do with them? Plant them. Plant them. <laughs> no, I mean, what do you want to do with them right now? <laughs> you could bring them inside if you want for the seat. There, we gotta. We We're doing a whole thing right now with seeds. This has worked so well. Is it so? This is going to be a woodshed. Is that what this is going to be? Yeah, this is going to be building materials. So all yeah, of well, I'm building like racking and structures and stuff for all of it. Then yeah, it's on the list. Do you even read my lists, babe? I make the lists. I color code the lists. <laughs> There's lists. It's on it. Story. I don't read your list. <laughs> it just so happened that her brother was dating uh, my best friend's sister and we were all going out to the pub and uh, they told Emily like, oh, you need to come out. You need to meet this Cody guy. Went out to get introduced to him. There was a whole bunch of people. It was a thing at some pub and uh, I made it halfway through a drink and I was just not feeling great and so I went to go home and 
he offered to walk me home and I was like, I live across the street. Like, you do not have to walk me home. Like, I live across the street. And he was like, oh no, no, just let me walk you. I'm like, literally, you can see my house, dude. You do not have to walk me home. And he insisted. It was cold. It was December in Alberta. It was like, the ice is, you know, thick, thick layers upon layers of ice. And I was slipping all over the place and had to like keep holding onto his arm so I didn't biff. And we just wound up just like talking and walking for so long. And then the next day, which was like, like 100% not my norm. But the next day I called my mom and I was like, mom, I met the one. Like, I'm gonna marry this guy. And she was like, what? <laughs> completely just like uh okay whatever you know like oh yeah I met some guy had half a beer at the bar let me tell you I'm gonna marry this guy and it was I don't even know why I don't even know what it was but we were just together every day since. I love this spot so much. I feel like it's so beautiful. I grew up on this street. I actually grew up right across the street from this house. Our backyard was the river. There's actually pictures of me right over there when I'm a kid, I'm small. And I have a ridiculously colored jacket on with like a striped, skirt, which doesn't make sense together. <laughs> and, and I'm making a driftwood sculpture on the beach right over there. Looking right there is was my backyard growing up. And then looking right there is my backyard now. It's actually wild to think that I grew up looking at, I mean, where I think I'm going to grow old. <laughs> I don't plan on leaving anytime soon. We started getting things into the ground probably like by May and June. I think we started, we basically started along the creek on that side. The ground was so hard and it was just all rocks and gravel and there was no digging through what had happened. So I ordered these drill bits, these auger bits that just like you can put onto your drill and they're huge, huge auger bits. And I was out there just like trying to like auger through basically bedrock to try and get my plants in there. I was like, this is not ideal. Hey team! <laughs> you are the least helpful. Right, take that one. I'll work with this one. Yesterday there was sun and there was rain. Beauty in the Monday. And as the Over the years, and I am 100% one of them, have been like, oh, I would so get 100 acres with you and build a homestead and just like live off the land and do the things. And like, like everybody says it, 
But then when you do it, you're like, oh. It's a wonderful idea. It's a beautiful sentiment uh, for people that want to do that. I don't think they realize how much work it is. Because <laughs> it's a lot. This actually takes me working seven days a week from sun up to sun down uh, in order to accomplish it. Right? It is a lot of work to have that idea and then to actually follow through with it. Between the wanting to run away to the hills and the actually running away to the hills, there's so much in between. You know what, if you can do it and you follow through and in five, 10 years, you have something working, you know what, good on you. I think that if I could say something to someone who was feeling that way, to somebody who wanted to get a hundred acres with their buddies and take off, I mean, if you want to do it and you have the means, do it. Go, like, do it. But if it's something that you feel passionate about and excited about, I'd say reach out to other people in your community that are doing things where you could learn those skills. Like, I've read a lot of books. I have a big library. I read a ton of stuff. I watch videos on stuff. I, I, I learn that way. But the thing that has taught me the most is just going out and doing, just getting my hands in the dirt, just being a student of nature and just going out there and just helping. And so like, if it's something that you want to do and something that, you know, like you live in an apartment and you're like, man, I'm going to escape this apartment. I'm going to go do this thing. Go help someone reach out, find a farm that you think is cool in your area. See what they're about and offer to help them. It's as simple as that. You'll learn so much. And every farmer, I don't know a single farmer in the world that doesn't need help. <laughs> we all need help. <laughs> help us. Right. It's all jobs, Cody. They all matter. All jobs matter. Even the ones we don't like. <laughs> so you're gonna tackle the greenhouse instead? how it works. It's almost always how it works. Go to start a project, see what you have, can't do it. Uh -huh. Move on to the next one. Oh. Holy man, it's starting to get hot. I'm gonna have to use this shirt. Okay. I'm sweating my bag off. <laughs> I gotta change. Are we yep. putting up the greenhouse today? Well, we got lots of people here, so might as well. Fun. Help us pull it over, and then you, you and I can you and I can pack. cut it and pack it and. Excellent. All that good Are stuff. Are you? Uh, I'm changing. I'm just like I'm sweating. I'm sweating, and I'm in shorts, so I don't know. extension cords. So small. <laughs> and so tight. It's so annoying. I don't think there was a moment of, I see the light at the end of the tunnel, like we're getting near because I don't think there is an end. Like I don't see an end. I see just a constant evolution of nature and you know, just a constant evolution of our impact here and the impact of this land on us. So it's like, I've seen so many glimmers of hope, hope and glimmers of light, you know? 
Nearly all the garbage has been removed from the property. And now that these brambles have been taken back, you can actually see where the creek forms. It starts like, it starts up here. Well, it starts way up there, but it comes down here. And then the second creek comes right in here and connects. So there's a little waterfall. It joins the upper pond there into this lower creek and takes it down. This land is gonna be so happy. It is gonna breathe deeper than it has in decades. It was just so many challenges, one after the other after the other. Like, I battled with seeding a lot. I seeded so much artichoke this spring, like so much. Did you get a lot of it? No. What? The mice ate every single one. In clearing all of this land and clearing all this area, the field mice and the rats and the all these critters, the skunks, skunks and the raccoons and all these friggin' critters that used to have a thousand places to hide no longer had those thousand places to hide. I created like barriers, like angry, aggressive barriers of sharps and traps and yeah. things and like tried to protect my trays as they were seeding. Nothing fucking worked. Really? Nothing worked. Like I just built them a really cozy room that they could hang out in and eat snacks. And every day I refilled their snacks and they loved it. I would come in in the morning and the lids would be popped off and they would have made it around all my traps and they shell them so they would actually dig into my trays, take out the seed, open the shell, eat the seed from inside and go on to the next one. So I'd come in in the morning and there would be all of these shelled artichoke seeds and I'd be like, no! Like, that's why okay, next so filled with rage. Tray after tray after tray got eaten by mice. And I finally started seeing some things pop up and survive and like make it through <laughs> the gauntlet of rodents and things trying to eat it. When I finally had some seeds popping and I knew that I was gonna get to plant, there was like a ray of light. <sighs> I felt a moment of like real gratitude for that working out and for the mice not really liking tomatoes. The mice didn't wanna eat the nightshades. Everybody else was toast. Every, I didn't get a single sunflower. They ate every single sunflower I seeded. They ate every single artichoke I seeded. They ate every single pea I seeded. Like most of the, most of the tender juices, they just annihilated. But not my tomatoes. That's why we had every day is tomato day because everything else the mice ate. Uh. You're right in my way. You're right in my way. I love you. But you're right in my way. So today it's tomatoes? Today it's tomatoes. Every day is kind of tomatoes around here. <laughs> I, uh, I thought, like when we were planning this months ago, we thought that we were gonna have these big giant greenhouses built by now and definitely had planned some extra things so then tomatoes I was like oh yeah 200 tomato plants why not I mean 15 different varieties of heirloom tomatoes sure let's let's do this but now I have 10,000 tomatoes and I'm like well you know that's every day is tomato day every day it's like my tomato has a tail what's it even doing with its life Look at that. Oh. What's it even doing with its life? So as much as this is work, it seems like you do enjoy it. I love this so much. It makes me super happy. Like I'm not happy every day. There's definitely hard days. In fact, there's been a string of hard days just recently that I barely survived. <laughs> well, I have, I have definitely felt overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, yes. Regret, no. I don't, like, even when things have been at their absolute hardest here, I have not regretted coming here. 
Um, but it has definitely been waves of overwhelm at times for sure. Like when I focus on like the stress of what's coming or how are we gonna make this happen or whatever, I get kind of bogged down and I get a little bit overwhelmed by it all. What keeps me going? I don't even know. What keeps me going? I mean, can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What keeps me going when times get tough? Times are, times are, I can't picture, I mean, and this holds nothing to anybody else's life. You know, this is just my life, but I can't picture my life ever being any worse than it was. I didn't have my life focused on nature. I had my life focused on everything but, and it was the darkest time in my life. Like I suffered a lot through years of addiction and trauma and turmoil. Like the things that I endured in the younger years of my life were like deeply, deeply tragic. It was, it was real dark. <laughs> there was a lot of really horrific things. And so I think that all the crap that happens now is just like, it is, it is hard and there is hard times and there are things that feel like crushing and the weight of like 10,000 things. And I'm like, oh my God, can I hold this? But I know I can because I survived things 10,000 times worse than whatever's happening here. And I made it somewhere brighter than I ever could have imagined through that. So I think, I think that maybe that's, like that's part of what keeps me going is just like knowing how far I've come and knowing that like, knowing that I will never be there again. Like I'll never be in that place again. I'll never be in that time again. I never have to suffer like that again. And I choose the light, <laughs> you know, like there was so much darkness chosen for me where I didn't have, I didn't have a choice. And, uh, and now I do. When I pulled myself out of all of that, it took me reconnecting with the land in order to really find my center again and find my peace and figure out where, like what was missing. When I'm just here, playing in my tomatoes, deadheading my flowers, just like, you know, giving food to people. <laughs> it's, uh, it's my favorite. It's definitely my favorite. So I choose happiness. You know, I choose to just keep swimming. <laughs> it looks like a disaster zone right now. I mean, partially because things are a disaster, but also it's winter. So everything's muddy and ugly. So. I feel a little bit like, don't show the ugly parts, Brendan. I transplanted these things here and I didn't know if they were gonna make it. I just ripped them out of the ground from somewhere else. Look at it. It's alive. It's alive. That's exciting. This is me doing things. That's Brendan. We'll get him. Excellent. So, one thing that I've been, I don't know how to start these. Okay, wait, wait. So, I wanted to show you, wait, who's looking at me, not the fucking camera, a little bit. 
It likes to keep its roots moist, but um, wait, fuck off. I wanted to show you what we're getting up to today. Uh, fall has a fucking stop touching your nose. Your nose isn't actually itchy. You just think it's itchy because you're filming yourself. Okay. Take three. <laughs> so this is pretty exciting. You can see here that these dahlias are going to seed. So hopefully it dries out enough in here and doesn't get too waterlogged from all this rain and will be able to save their seed for next year. Very cool. It's amazing to me how beautiful these still are. My neighbor is pulling out right now and I feel like he can see me and it's making me nervous. Let's see, this is the first onion from this area. Let's see, look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at this puppy. Oh, snap. How cool is that? <laughs> on today's episode of What the Heck is Going On Here, <laughs> you guys, <laughs> I'm trying to do a thing here. a crazy day. We launch our very first episode today. It, uh, it feels like a milestone. It feels like, like all of my <laughs> All of my fears and anxieties, and I'm just pushing past them and opening myself up and the people that I love, too. You know, it at first I was thinking to myself that. It's one of my biggest fears to be out there, <laughs> all vulnerable and raw. <laughs> um, but then I realized that I'm putting the people I love in that space too. I'm opening them up. And and they are so supportive. It's beautiful. <clears throat> so if they can be brave, I can be brave. Oh, fuck. This is stupid. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> this feels so silly now. This feels so silly now. Okay. Good morning, everyone. It is October 12th today. <clears throat> and we are launching our new series on YouTube. Here <laughs> <laughs> you go, guys. The fruits of your labor. My name is Emily, and this is our vlog. <laughs> <laughs> we did it! We're doing the damn thing! We're doing the damn thing! We currently have 300 and some odd followers, and we... <laughs> we are sharing things in a way that feels good. Like, whether three people 
see it and learn from it or 3,000 people see it and learn from it, I am really enjoying sharing this. I've mentioned in previous videos how I use comfrey fertilizer uh, to feed my garden. So this is just fermented comfrey leaf. It's just comfrey and water, that's all it is. And it is what I use to feed all of my flowers, all my vegetables, my tomatoes, everything. If you guys had smell-o-vision, you would wanna turn it off right now. Just saying, just saying. Oh, it's actually not that bad today. This is the gloriousness that is comfy fertilizer. So I am just going to try and scoop some of this jazz aside, scoop up some of the fertilizer and get moving on the plant. Oh, it's gonna smell so bad when I I'm pull this back. To smell it. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Can you hold that right there? Yep, sure can. <laughs> oh my lord. Do we need to stir it? Ugh. <laughs> oh my lord. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. It's a reel inside of there. So if you actually come and look at it. Do it this is the cutting edge here. Yep. Okay. Yep. And this just rotates. And that's it. That's great. And that and that's what does all the cutting. My thought behind the circle was that everything has a center, you know? <laughs> I wanted to build this place up for a community. I knew that I wanted to build it up more than just for me and Cody. It was it was going to be a space where people could heal, where people could come together and learn things, grow together in in so many different ways and I wanted there to be a space for all of us to go that was just centered, that was grounded and held a space of peace. People thought I was crazy. They're like, oh, I don't know. And I was out there like, no, like this is, this is what I'm, if I build it, they will come. <laughs> you know, this is what's going down. It, it really has become the center, right? I mean, I've definitely even found myself coming out here in moments where I've needed to find my center and, and look inward. Like, I would like to think that Cody was feeling as excited as I was. I think Cody was a little bit sad because this place is so magical. And obviously, like, it's not something that we're going to do for six months and then move. It's like a lifelong adventure. I think that made Cody a little bit sad because he loves Alberta and loves his dad and loves his dad's farm. And I think that in Cody's heart, he could see himself taking over his dad's farm. So I'd like to say that he jumped in with both feet as immediately and fell in love as I did. But I think it was a bit bittersweet, you know? Like he loves this place and he loves the plans and he loves like, like he's in it. But I think, oh, it makes me feel sad. I think that his passion and excitement was more about making my dreams come true and supporting my dreams than it was about supporting his dreams. But he still loves the dreams and still is like in it, you know, and it's beautiful. But I think his heart is at his dad's house, <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, I know when I talked to him, he, he was like, you know, like he's, he's told me about the old farm and stuff like that. But he also said, he's like, you know, we wouldn't have what we have here. You know, it's like my family's there, but like my chosen family's here. And like we couldn't have done 
all of this. We can't do all of this without all of, like, you guys, like us, and, and all the friends, the friends of the farm, you know. That's who come what he here. said? Yeah. Aw. Okay. That makes me happy. Yeah. Oh, no, now I'm weepy. <laughs> now I feel things, Brendan. What have you done? <sighs> okay. Yeah. That's nice. That makes yeah. me happy. When the water's lower, you can walk all along here and you can get through the little gaps over there. It's so beautiful. This whole beach is just so beautiful. And you can walk all along these rocks all the way out. Being invited back to this space. It was it was such a hard decision for me because there's just so much baggage, you know, like there's just, I had so, so many reservations. Hi everyone. We have reached the final day of tucking our ceremony circle away for winter. There's certain things that happened in my younger years that, you know, I, I just wasn't able to fully come to terms with. What we're gonna be doing today is planting our spring bulbs. And I just could not be more excited about the whole process because we've been working on this circle all year. If I would have walked down here and remembered something beautiful from here, I would have immediately attached something dark to it. You know, when we started, it was just a pile of garbage. Even if it was just a happy memory, immediately it was like a wave of, oh, but fuck you. And now we have, we've let the land breathe. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to come back here because of that, you know, it was like, I didn't want to live across the street from something that was gonna remind me of something so painful. We have created this beautiful circle of medicine and energy where it just feels like it's, it feels like it is the heart of this place now. It's just so special. I think it was probably the first week or so that we were here and I decided to walk across the street and I had like a like a flood of emotions of sadness and anger and joy and all of these things and uh, and then bit by bit I felt like I started remembering these really happy things the reason that we're planting these blooms is even more special because it's for Aaliyah's little squish. So the little is due in the early spring and we want to be able to hold a very, very special sacred space for this little squish. I just think it's gonna be so cool. Aaliyah grew up in this house Her mom went into labor here in this home and now we're gonna be able to hold that space for Leah's little squish. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> and I just think that's so beautiful. I thought that it was my lot in life to not be able to remember those things with joy in my heart. I thought I just needed to forget them because they would always be attached to something else. And something inside me healed here. Something inside me changed and felt better and safer and okay. I just think it's gonna be really, really special. So today <laughs> we get to plant our spring bulbs and uh, we get to pay 
paint that picture. to come here um I don't think so I don't think I've had one of those moments of like oh god like I shouldn't have done this I think the more tragedy I see out there it's piles and piles of garbage the more I'm like this is where I was meant to be like every mistake I've ever made, every lesson I've ever learned that was really fucking hard, that was just really, really hard, led me to be here. Like, I've never felt it so clearly in my life where I was just like, this is where I am meant to be. I think my mom really just instilled in me how important it is to have a community, you know? Like, what is it? Like, when you have all that you need, don't build higher walls, build a bigger table. That feels like the meaning of life. Like, when you have what you need, building higher walls or like, you know, upping your prices so you can make $14 off a freaking cauliflower, like, that's not the answer. Like, the answer is build a bigger table, you know? Like, if everybody has something and they can come together, they can make something so beautiful for everyone. And sharing in that is so important. All of our friends that we have that come here and play and participate, you know, it's like some people think, and it is work, it is a lot of work, you know? But some people view it just as work and, for some reason, when we get down to it here, it is just so much fun. It feels like play. Like we were talking about it the other day, how when Kirsty and her mom came over, can I get a shot of you girls right now because it's the cutest? You're gonna be on my Instagram, Heather. This is beautiful. It's raining so hard. And it was freezing cold. It was windy. It was raining. And we laughed all day. The whole entire day was just laughing and playing and even mistakes were happening. You know, I ripped dahlias in two and this one's rotten and it's one of my favorites and blah, blah, blah. But we just laughed the whole time and had so much fun. And I think that that is really what it's about. It's not just a farm. Like this isn't just land. This isn't just earth. This is actually a part of us that we're sewing in every time we work into it. Everybody's coming and giving so much of themselves into this place. This isn't just anybody's anymore. This is everybody's now. The life that we are breathing back into this land is just, it's everything. It's everything and it's gonna give everything for generations to come. It's about people coming together to build something bigger than themselves and be a part of something beautiful and, and be able to give back and share and create. Like, I just think it's so cool. And I wouldn't want to do this by myself. As amazing as it looked in the summer, uh, with everything in bloom and the little bit of garden that we had growing and the endless tomato days. <laughs> um, it's still just the prologue to what is the Wilsons on Wilson. I remember the days All those years ago that never fade away And I remember your face I can recall the time and place On a midnight walk Through the old streets Trying to turn back the clock To the days of old Back to the days when all the things we knew Were made of gold As the world moves on Time sings a song dynamic we agreed on. You look wonderful. 
But like, look at that hairdo. I mean, thanks, mom. Oh, yes! <laughs> you having fun? I'm having so much fun. <laughs> that second one just went. When you did that, I watched it. <laughs> We are inventorying our seeds that we've saved. Cody! <sighs> okay. Fuck! These raspberries actually came from my mom's house probably 10 years ago at least. I was really excited to be able to spread them out, give them more space to grow, somewhere for their roots to really take off, and to just bring a piece of my mom into a space where I get to spend time every single day. Um, I'm grateful for her every single day. She is just the best kind of human in the world. So um, I just really love that I get to have this little piece of her here with me in this adventure. I think it's gonna be really amazing and then I'll just I'll just start it and then you guys will see how much fun it is. And then once you guys see how much fun it is, you'll be like, I'm missing out and I need a piece of the action. This is, how long has that been on? No, just, I wish longer. <laughs> I wish it was on longer. You really, it's quite the pitch.